Hello everybody and welcome to the Growing Pulses in 2019 webinar series with today's webinar on frost. My name is Prue Cook and I work with the Birchip Cropping Group and I coordinate the GRDC funded Southern Pulse Extension Project. This project is delivered by a consortium of researchers, agronomists, farming systems groups, growers and pulse experts to increase the knowledge of growers and advisors on sustainable pulse production improving the southern region's capacity to maximise future growth and prof profitability opportunities. Now, before we start the webinar, everybody should be muted. Um, it, we'll, have it, we'll take questions after Audrey's presentation and the Q&A window at the bottom of your screen allows you to ask questions. So if you see a button for Q&A, if you click that, you can open the window, type your question into the box and hit send. You can also check send anonymously if you don't want your name attached to your question. Um, now, for this webinar is also being recorded, so if you can't stay for the whole thing, if you have any technical issues or you would like to share this, the recordings will be made available on the GRDC YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Now, let's get straight into today's presentation. I'd like to introduce you all to Audrey Gallahunty. She's a Rural Research Agronomist with Agriculture Victoria based in Mildura which she says is quite warm today. Audrey has a background in pulse agronomy, focusing on both frost and heat. Her PhD focus was improving the tolerance of lentil to high temperature tolerance through genetic solutions. Audrey, over to you. Thanks, Prue. Hello, everyone. Uh, so as Prue said, today I'll be covering off on frost response in lentil, but more broadly, how this relates to pulses more generally. So before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge GRDC and Agriculture Victoria for their funding of this research. Frost is a massive issue and can significantly reduce both yield and quality in lentil and also all broadacre crops, where we estimate that frost causes about $360 million of losses per year in broadacre cropping in Australia. For lentil, frost damage can occur at any stage, like pulses, but the most sensitive stage is generally around the reproductive period, so this is when we're looking at both flowering and potting. The extent of damage is determined by firstly the location, landscape, as well as climate, and of course the timing, so when the frost is occurring, because obviously if it's hitting those sensitive phases then you're going to have more damage, the duration and the number of events. Over recent years, frost damage has occurred um, a lot in the Mallee and Wimmera, which has caused significant reductions, unfortunately, in both yield and quality, which I'm sure our listeners here are too aware of. And this recent increase is due to there has been more frost over the last couple of years, several years, I should say, and also accompanied by widespread adoption of earlier sowing. And of course, um, this is sort of pushing us into that higher risk window for frost. So management strategies for frost are currently very difficult and they are based around both avoidance and agronomic management. There are currently no genetic, there's no current genetic tolerance to frost. It's all based on both the avoidance and agronomic. So avoidance is through shifting our reproductive period. So we don't want flowering when there's frost. So this can be through, of course, time of sowing and also selecting varieties based on when they flower. But the reality with this is, that it pushes us into our heat risk window. So it's a real, I suppose, consideration. Frost and heat, you know, in your location, which one do you really need to consider? And year to year, it's gonna be different, unfortunately. As a systems approach, of course, it's very important to spread our risk. So you don't want everything flowering at the same time. So thinking about what pulses you have, but also cereals. So if a frost occurs at a particular time, it's not gonna wipe out the entire farm which is probably one of the key things that we can do to manage. And of course, there's agronomic management, which includes um, rolling or removal of stubble. But again, these have benefits, but also they do affect how our crops are growing. Particularly removal of stubble is really, really important if we do keep our stubble there to help our pulses grow up tall and for harvest ability, et cetera. And importantly, although it's not a management strategy, something that really needs to happen is after a frost event, a few days after, get out there and assess the crop damage because it will be different in different pockets of the paddock and also across the farm. So when we talk about frost, we're talking 
if you hear about two degrees, it could even be a bit higher. I always think around four degrees, it's probably worth going out to see if there's any damage. So get down in the crop, look at your pods. If you've got them, flowers, have they aborted or is it more just your leaf damage? So here we have a um, table on frost tolerance of pods and seeds. So I'll just give you a moment to take it in. As you can see, we have the pulses that are dominated within this region. Okay, so as you can see, we have some variation in our response to our frost with our pulses, where unfortunately field peas are very susceptible to frost damage. And this difference tends to be associated with canopy structure and growth habit of the plant. And if you think of a field pea, those pods, there's not a lot protecting that seed. Chickpeas and lentils are also very susceptible to frost, but not to quite the extent as field peas. They do have some ability to, following a frost event, reset pods. And also in the case of chickpeas, which is a real benefit, is that they need a diurnal temperature of 15 degrees before they can set pods. So this typically pushes them out of that frost risk window. Not every time, but generally they do seem to move out of that because obviously those warmer temperatures are associated with later on in the season. And of all the pulses, Faba beans is the most tolerant to frost and this is associated with the pod structure where they're quite hairy and the seeds are quite protected. One helpful management strategy um, that can help reduce our losses with frost in some cases is to cut for hay and this is particularly in the case of fetch and also can be applied to field peas and faba beans. Obviously, again, this is about weighing up what the frost damage is, how bad it is, and at the, you know, looking at grain prices and making that decision. Importantly, and um, one of my favourite things about pulses is their indeterminate nature. So this does provide some capacity for them to recover following a frost event, but to what extent, and this is to be very mindful of, is dependent on timing. So when does the frost occur? Obviously, earlier in the season, so flowering, they have more time to recover following that frost event and also the availability of other resources, for example, water. Although not a way to manage frost, um, a way to potentially improve our tactical decisions following a frost event is through using proximal sensing. So the idea would be to go out um, following a frost event and map the damage across the paddock and then determine the, firstly the extent of the damage and then are some areas you know, more affected than others. And then when we're going to harvest this, can we harvest based on segregating for quality where you can still get your grade one lentils, for example, and then harvest the poorer quality areas and pockets following that harvest of the higher quality. This would be um, used through remote sensing and would potentially, you know, be associated with flight using a UAV. So, to understand frost better in lentils and also, I suppose, more broadly pulses, um, Agriculture Victoria has set out to firstly understand the fundamental response and then go through and try and unravel a few questions we have around um, frost. So the research objectives were, there's three. So the first one is to define the fundamental response of lentil to different frost intensities. The second one is to test the utility of remote sensing for early detection of frost damage to enable timely management decisions, which is what I just went through. And the third, which has come out of industry, so it'll be interesting to get people's perception at the end of the um, webinar, is determining if group B herbicide tolerance, so when this, these research objectives were set, this was based around um, PBA hurricane, are these more sensitive to frost compared to our conventional varieties, for example, Jumbo 2? So to set out and understand this, we used a bit of a different method. So rather than using natural frost, we designed a way to apply artificially using mobile frost chambers. So the idea here was that we could target specific developmental stages where we really wanted to unravel what's going on at different stages and where the sensitivity is. And then finally, by using this method, we were able to create a backdrop to collect remote sensing measurements where we're able to control we were able to control when first we were applying the frost and how much frost was encountered by the plants. So the cooling mechanism was through dry ice. I'm not sure if everyone can see that or not. But um so it was done in the evening from um 8 pm till midnight and it was done through stepped additions. 
And this is the experimental setup that examples from Horsham in 2017 on a nice jumbo crop. So just to provide an example of how this method works, we've got some temperature traces here. We have our temperature up our Y axis and time on our X. So these treatments were at flowering and filling pod. And then we have three intensities, so a low, medium and high. And we compare this to our ambient. And as you can see, we're consistently getting temperatures below zero for quite a while, which is what we were targeting. And there is some variation in the methodology. However, we were fairly happy with it and wanting to proceed with this method. So before I go on, a key component to this work is when we talk about frost, we like to consider the cold sun. So rather than just talking about it, for example, here we have a minus 4.3, we like to think about the duration because this is um, driving a lot of our effect. So what's going on in the crop and how much damage. So the cold sun is the intensity by the duration. So duration here is nine hours and then this is an intensity of 4.3. So this equates to a cold sum of around 38, 38 degrees, degree hours below zero, which is quite a heavy frost and certainly hopefully something no one encounters this year. So in 2017, the trial was at Horsham in Victoria, where we had um, four replicants and six, six treatments. So we had a control, which was that any natural frost, those um, lentils were hit by it protected control where we covered, <coughs> excuse me, where we protected against natural frost to try and have a background of pretty much no frost. And then we applied it flowering, early pod, flat pod and filling pod using um, a fairly strong industry standard for um, PDA Jumbo 2. So this firstly looking at the objective of to define the fundamental response of lentil to different frost intensities using this experimental design. What we found was um, looking at grain yield response. Um, so this is just for Jumbo 2. We have our yield and our cold sum. So remember, this is our intensity by duration. And what we found when we, look, we pulled it all out is we looked at flowering, early pod, flat pod and filling pod. We were able to sort of group the podding stages together and flowering had a different response. So with flowering, which is this dotted line here, we see that there's no yield reduction until we get to a threshold of around 31 degree hours below zero. Thereafter, we do see a sharp reduction. So every time there's a frost after that, we're seeing a reduction of 3.8%, which is obviously quite steady. But to think about this in a cropping context, to get to that threshold of 31 degree hours during flowers, we really need to be seeing well, just under 16 hours of minus two. So obviously this isn't in one night, this is cumulative, but that is still a considerable amount of frost. So I guess one of the silver linings there around frost at flowering is there is capacity for lentil to recover. The capacity um, is based around obviously intensity. So when we're getting, you know, some really heavy frost, continuous, we may not see that recovery but nevertheless, it is something to be mindful of when a frost does hit at flowering, there is certainly some capacity to recover. However, at potting, unfortunately, we don't seem to see the same story. Where we get a linear response. So every frost that hits, we get a reduction, unfortunately, in grain yield. So this, when we equated it out, is a 2% reduction per degree hour below zero. So unfortunately, um, this was for early potting, flat potting and filling potting, which is what we observed here. And then moving on from that, we also wanted to understand grain quality and the effect here. So as you can see, the frost was, these are lentils, so jumbo two, and the frost was applied at potting. And when you have not a lot of cold load, your lentils look okay. It was a reasonably dry year. And then as you increase, your damage gets worse. So this really, really hones in that frost during that potting stage will really have an effect on not only your yield, but also your quality. Where once again, this brings into that potential through remote sensing, is, that is there that opportunity to harvest based on quality, which is something that we're currently looking into through a new research project. So the second objective of this um, was looking at to testing the utility of remote sensing for early detection of frost damage for timely management decisions. So this was in season and this was looking at canopy, not seed. 
So this was following the frost event. Every day after the frost, we would go out and take a number of remote sensing measurements. And what we found is that um, through these handhold devices, there are a number of um, indices that were strongly correlated with cold load. So this included NDVI. So I'm sure most of you are quite aware of NDVI and what we had to do to represent just frost was standardised against our natural senescence. But as you can see, we do have a reasonable correlation, but once again, we have this threshold where up until 31 degree hours, we're not really seeing a huge um, decrease, in, decrease in greenness, where this is attributed to, um, we're thinking that this indice is potentially not as sensitive to frost damage. So another opportunity was to look at a indice called PRI, which is used as an indicator of photo chemical response. And what we found here is that it's more sensitive to uh, a change in a change through frost compared to NDVI, where it potentially offers a more alternative, an alternative and robust indice where we're not having to adjust it for senescence. So what we see here is somewhat similar to um, NDVI again, we still see not really a big change until we get to here it's 22 degree hours and then we do start seeing a significant change through the frost damage which indicates that both this indice so PRI and DVI there is that opportunity to use these to detect frost damage at a crop level. So more work is really required in this space to say, firstly, I suppose, look if there are other indices that may um, be able to help us in detecting frost damage. And then secondly, can this be done on a larger scale? And what is the applicability? How will it work on a farm setting? So the third objective of this work um, came a bit later and really was through um, consultation with industry. So going to a number of events and hearing that the hur hurricanes are um, senescing more and, you know, this is translating to grain yield. Are they more sensitive to frost compared to the conventional varieties? So this was something we really wanted to understand. <coughs> but I suppose one question I have for everyone is if they are more sensitive to frost, would people still grow them? Because obviously they either have that advantage in a, in a system. So just to recap on last year, which I'm not sure many people would like to revisit, but um, it just sets a scene for um, the experimental program from last year. So 2018, the trial site was at Odeon. It was very dry at Odeon last year. So we received at the trial site 93 millimetres of growing season rainfall. So this was a decile one year. And to build on this, we had a significant amount of frost. So in total, during the um, reproductive window, we had 37 mornings below zero degrees and 26 mornings below minus two. <coughs> and of these, I need to point out, this is at Canopy, <coughs> not at, um, not at, at uh, Stevenson Stony High, and there is always a difference. So this is what the plants are actually receiving. So here we have our cold summing degree, degree hours here. And then we have our, our dates along here. So this F here indicates flowering and this is feeling pod. So late vegetative, frost, frost, frost. We had a bit of a break and then continuous frost throughout this. Last year was particularly bad for frost. So back to our question, is there a difference between um, our IMI variety? So we've got PBA hurricane here and Jumbo 2. So this photo was taken at Odeon last year. Um, <coughs> at Jason Brand's Southern Pulse Agronomy trial site um, following a frost. So this was two days after a significant frost event in the late vegetative stage. And what we see here is Jumbo 2 and Hurricane. So I'll leave it up to your interpretation if you can see a difference in those two, but I can see some more senescence in this one. So to answer this, what we did is um, similar to in 2017, we applied the frost using the experimental uh, chambers that we have put on. So keeping in mind, we did do that despite the significant frost events that naturally occurred. So the trial was, as I said, at Oyen, and we had three treatments. So building on from what we'd learned in the year before, we found that um, around that potting stage was most sensitive. So we targeted filling pod, and late vegetative because late vegetative is when 
growers tend to be seeing significantly more senescence in those in your varieties. And we used six varieties and these were very, very specifically targeted. So we had our Imi lines, which are in green, which Hallmark wasn't released at the time, but was now has now been and is widely being grown. And then we had Jumbo 2 as our industry standard and flash, which is within the breeding lines of Hurricane. So really trying to unravel that genetic difference there. And what we found is that under the severe conditions, we didn't see any difference. Where here we have some box plots. So we've got our yield along our, our Y axis and then along our X axis, we compare conventional to IMI for natural frost. So this is all that natural frost we saw before, which I have just got here to show you. So natural frost, then we have vegetative. So that's when we applied frost at the vegetative stage and then coupled with the natural frost. And then we applied again at that pod, potting stage plus the natural. And what we see here, there is a little bit of difference, but they are equivalent. So we don't see a difference when we group our conventionals to our innies for under any of these conditions. Yes, we do see a bit of a decrease in our reproductive in general, which does really suggest that that potting stage is particularly sensitive to frost. Something that I really want to point out with this message though, is that this was under severe frost conditions. So to put it into what it really looked like, we've got our cumulative um, cold sum here and then our date. So I showed this figure before, but what I didn't include was the applied frost. So these two lines here are the, what we applied at vegetative and and potting. So basically that differential comes from here. But as you can see, the amount that naturally occurred was huge compared to what we applied. So please be mindful that we aren't seeing a difference in um, response between our IMI varieties and our conventional under severe frost conditions. More work is occurring this year through Pulse Breeding Australia to see if there's a difference under more mild conditions. Obviously you can't predict your season and last year just happened to be quite a frosty one. <clears throat> so finally, what I'd like everyone to take home today is that we've found that lentil are more susceptible to frost damage during the pod filling stage. So once again, as we saw during flowering, there's that capacity to recover, which is really, really important and something that is a real benefit to pulse crops. Secondly, under severe frost conditions, um, IMI tolerant varieties are not more susceptible to frost damage. And this is both vegetative and reproductive frost. And thirdly, we have identified some promising remote si sensing indices, and there is that opportunity potentially to segregate based on grain quality using remote and proximal sensing in the future. Finally, I'd just uh, like to acknowledge GDC and Agriculture Victoria again for their funding and support, and also Frontier Farming Systems Kate Finger, Mitchell from and Alexander Clancy for their support in the experimental program because um, a significant amount, amount of work goes into applying frost uh, using this method. method. Thank you and feel free to contact me on the following. Thank you. Wonderful, Audrey. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd just like to let all of our listeners know how dedicated Audrey is. This uh, frost research that She's done, has involved her spending a lot of time out in freezing cold paddocks in the middle of the night. Um, so, so there's a lot of dedication behind the research that you've had presented today. Audrey, I have a, a question from my colleague who is sitting beside me, but just as a reminder to everyone else online, if you would like to ask Audrey a question, we have time for a couple. Um, please click the Q&A button down the bottom of your screen and you can type in a question there. So the first question that I've got for you Audrey, there are differences in frost tolerant between pulse types. Is frost tolerance related to plant height? Uh, in some cases yes, so it's either like it can be plant height or even canopy, how much canopy is closing over in some, you know, some species and also varieties more than others. So yeah, it can be associated with plant height. Excellent. If anybody else has got any questions, now would be the time to get them in. While you're thinking of any last minute questions that you wanna get so we can ensure that we stick to time, 
Um, if you're looking for further information on pulses, GRDC Grow Notes are a very comprehensive resource. And also the GRDC Southern Pulse Extension Project has a number of activities occurring this spring to bring you the latest pulse information. So we have a network of discussion groups across Victoria and South Australia, uh, the new pulse growers, and uh, we're also running a series of workshops. Um, now, I've just had a question come in for you, Audrey. Should we be feeding pulses more to increase canopy? Feeding them more in regards to fertiliser? Yes. Um, it's a hard one because you'll be increasing your cost and whether or not um, the increase you'll get in your canopy is going to be more then your offput through your increase in your inputs is hard to say, but um, I'd probably stick to at this stage, not depending on your area, if it's really particularly frost prone, maybe it would be worth giving it a go. Excellent. Thank you, Audrey. Okay, so pulse check groups you can have a look at. We've got pulse workshops happening right across Victoria and South Australia this spring. Um, and if you have any other suggestions or requests for things that you'd like to learn about pulses, please drop me a line anytime. The best contact number uh, contact for me is my email, which is prue, P-R-U dot cooks, double O-K, at bcg.org.au. Unless we have any last minute questions, let's wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Audrey, for your time today. Once you drop off the webinar, you will be directed to a screen with a quick survey link. It has five questions. It should take you no more than a minute just to see how you found today. If you're able to fill that out, that would be very much appreciated and will help us to continue to bring you Pulse webinars. This is a monthly initiative. So the next one will be about, the, we're looking at holding it around the 15th, so the middle of each month. Um, if you would like to be kept in the loop of those webinars as they occur, again, please drop me a line and I can email you when they're coming up. Again, my email is prue.cook at bcg.org.au. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Audrey. And I hope that you stay away from the frost this season. <laughs>